Um, hi, I'm your speaker at 1115. My name is Danielle Adams. Um, I'm from the Node.js project and the OpenJS Foundation. Um, I actually live here in New York, so very happy to cross the river and speak to all of you people. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about the work that I do on Node.js as a Node.js releaser. So. Uh, yeah, let's get started. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, I work at AWS. Um, if you're familiar with cloud computing and cloud software, you might have heard of it. Um, I work on a, t on a platform called Amplify. Uh, it's a platform for mobile and web developers to build their applications. Um, I also work on the Node.js project. So um, those of you that are here, you probably have heard of it or worked with it, hopefully. Um, and so I am a releaser, uh, and I'll talk about what that means, and a member of the Node.js um, technical steering committee. So I work on the project to help, or I work with the other leaders on the project to help um, you know, make it a great project for everybody and sustainable um, you know, and work on the future of the project. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about the work that I do as a releaser. Uh, so does anybody here know um, how many supported releases there currently are of Node.js? Six. Six. Okay. That's a good answer. Um, not quite right, but good answer. Uh, and then does anybody know how many uh, releases have been done this year? Just shout it out. 15? OK. Uh, did you say 50 or 15? 15. 15, yeah. It's a little more than that. But um, So I'll go over all of that and what that means. Um, we actually have four supported releases now, and we've done about 50 over the past year. So what is a release when I talk about that? I'm going to be saying that word a lot, so we're going to just um, breeze through all the definitions so that you kind of understand when I'm throwing these words around that are a little bit more um, nuanced when it comes to Node. So a release is a Node.js, um, excuse me, a release in Node.js refers to the code changes that have been made to the code base that will be built and released on top of in the Node distribution channels. Uh, code changes are evaluated by each commit. Um, so Node.js might have up to five active release lines. Like I said, right now we have four. Um, and a release line is a Semver major version that is maintained um, kind of simultaneously next to the base project, which you could just think of as like the main Git branch. Uh, releasers, which is what I am, um, we prepare the releases and are responsible for testing and releasing the builds um, and deploying the releases and making sure that everything goes smoothly and that we have these nice releases that are released to the world and that everyone is able to use. So um, these are the different stages of the releases. So I think, um, as most of you know, um, or if, you're work if you've worked with Node, you might know, uh, we have three different types of releases. We have current, we have active LTS, and we have maintenance LTS. So if you have a current version, if you're using, so right now the current version would be version 19. Um, this happens every six months, and they're maintained uh, versions that are most closely synced to what's happening on the uh, main branch. So you're getting all the latest and greatest features that have just been merged into Node, um, and everything's kind of tested out in the wild there. Um, active LTS is our name for kind of like the actively released on stable branch. So usually uh, commits that have been released on the act, okay, I always get the words mixed up. The commits that have been released on the current branch usually get pulled into the um, active version. And then those, so we know that those features have been tested already and tested in the wild. Um, and then we have the maintenance version, and so that is for 18 months, and then that only gets the bug fixes and security patches, so that's really um, kind of another stable version that we're maintaining, but doesn't get the new greatest features. Uh, so this is a timeline visual for the releases. Um, so first, um, we're going to use BR and AR before release and after release uh, to refer to the different stages of a release. So about Three months before release, um, no, the Node uh, project starts coordinating that, okay, I'm, on this date, we're going to have a major release. Um, usually, 
in September and April of every year. They happen every six months. And so there's a lot of work that goes into that about deciding, okay, what's going into the release? And then also um, just making sure that it's very uh, well tested. So a release candidate is, is created and then um, after a couple months of kind of preparation, it's finally released on release day, and it's like a big deal. All the blog posts go out. It's, you know, everybody's excited. Um, okay, yeah, so I mentioned the preparation. Um, day zero is when the release is released. Uh, and then, so during that current period, after six months, um, the release is changed to an active LTS. It becomes stable. Uh, that's only for the even versions of the um, node releases. The odd versions then reach end of life. Uh, they've kind of reached their, um, uh, they've, they've, so since the, all of the major versions are kind of um, mirroring what's in dev, I'm sorry, in main, then the odd versions are no longer needed because we have a new um, current version that's been released. Um, and so then after that, uh, after, let's see, so yeah, so after uh, a year of being uh, a, the active LTS, then it's moved to maintenance LTS. And then um, after three years, uh, it reaches end of life and the version has been deprecated. So this is um, just a scatter plot of all of the uh, different commit sizes of each release. So I mentioned that each release, um, the way that it's prepared, it's evaluated by commit. Um, so you could see kind of how I mentioned there's that first six months of the current release, then it's 12 months, months of the active LTS. You can kind of see with um, version 14, um, in that first kind of six months, there it's kind of flat lines, and then suddenly after six months, it's, it goes up, and that's because the releases, when it was first released, were more frequent. Um, uh, usually the releases are about 100 commits each, give or take, and then after six months, those releases, because it's a more stable um, release, they become less frequent, but each release has more stuff in it, and so that's why we get, you know, version 14, we had, um, we had a 600 commit release, uh, version, where are we, 16. Uh, this year there was a 700 commit release, and so those releases are really exciting because they bring in all of the latest, greatest features that have already been tested and current. So I just talked about how we kind of have all of these releases out in the wild. So how do we maintain these all at once? So. Uh, release lines have two Git branches. Everything comes back to Git. It's very, um, the Git workflow is really great for managing a lot of the release stuff. And so um, when we cut a release, we create two different uh, branches. We have one that's used for staging the changes on the next release, and then the other one is used to mirror what has already been released in the last release. So you could think of it as having um, you know, they, they, one is like, it, it's kind of like how a service would work. You know, one is like the staging environment, the other one is what's in production. And so it's called like staging and pretty much just production. Um, Node.js collaborators use GitHub labels to categorize commits by their semver change. Um, so it's easier to figure out which commits go into the release line. I just talked about how we have releases with hundreds and hundreds of commits. Um, it's really important that the collaborators are working uh, together to correctly uh, label each of the GitHub um, pull requests, because this is how everything is on GitHub, so that when releasers go through, we can kind of um, make sure we're not reading everything so closely, but we can categorize, we can like filter stuff out that wouldn't go into, what shouldn't go into the release. Um, so just to kind of, this is another visual of like a timeline. So every time a major release is cut, um, it branches off of the main branch, and then it kind of lives on its own forever until that version reaches end of life. Um, and so this is how this works with the two branches that are used to um, maintain the release. So we have main, um, and so the little squares are commits. Um, so those commits will get pulled into the staging branch. Um, those are uh, used to like test and uh, test the build locally and whatnot. And then uh, while we're releasing, we pull those changes into the production branch, the main branch for the next release, and then they sync up 
because they've now have the same, because now that code has been released via um, a, 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 like a release. So how do we go through all of these commits? So I have my main branch, everything goes to main. Um, I can use, so the Node.js releasers, we have a CLI tool called branch diff, um, and that will make API calls to GitHub, and it will pull in all of the commits that have been properly labeled to for how, how I want, for the commits that I want to bring into this. So for instance, um, a, a, a label that gets used a lot is Semver major. So we have commits that have been landed on main. Um, some of those are meant to be for the next major version of Node. So we don't want to pull those into the current versions of Node because it's not a Semver major change. So we use a deny list to Semver to, with like all these different tags, including Semver major. And then so that the tool knows, OK, skip that commit that's already that's um, targeting the Semver major change. So we cherry pick each one, um, and we pull it on to the uh, staging branch so that we can test it. Uh, Mention, yeah, there's a lot of Git magic here. So again, I showed like a little bit how that works, but how does this scale? There are, could be hundreds of commits. I can't just pick each one by itself. So um, while there might be hundreds of commits in a single release, we have to automate as much as we can. So we can't automate that whole process because, or we can't automate it yet because um, every time we pull in a commit, there might be a merge conflict or a test might fail or um, just something you know, doesn't look right or whatever. We have to kind of, anything that uh, comes in and it doesn't land cleanly, the releasers have to be able to identify it and say, oh, this shouldn't go into this release. Um, and so that part is a little bit harder to automate. Um, so it, the human element is really key in that. And so um, usually when we do run into merge commits, uh, I'm sorry, uh, merge conflicts, uh, we at, will ask the original PR author to create a backport to the release branch. So um, what does that mean? A backport PR, um, it's something that's pretty regular on the Node.js project. So um, it means it is a commit that's already been approved uh, to go to main, but it doesn't land cleanly on to the staging branch. So usually this happens with big refactors, um, you know, anything that has been built on to, or anything that's been worked on on top of a Semver major uh, change, then it might create a merge conflict when you're pulling it into another code base, or when you're pulling it into another release line, excuse me. Um, okay, so let's see. Oh yeah, so this is how we automate. Uh, we take the list of uh, commits that I saw that are returned from this, this, um, this tool, and then we pipe them to cherry pick, and then they are cherry picked onto the staging branch for that release. Uh, so I make tests. Um, once the test passes, everything's good, right? Uh, wrong. So that's just the beginning. We've already pulled in commits, but now we have to make sure that all of the commits are actually working together. So a releaser on their um, device or on their mach local machine, they can uh, run a build of Node.js, and then they will run the test suite against that build that they've created. So I have my personal Mac. I'll create a local node build, and then I'll run the test suite against it. Um, so yeah, so what happens when something fails or the build fails? We use git bisect um, to make sure we can go through all of the commits. Um, I won't go into too much detail about that because one of the other Node.js releasers is speaking later this afternoon. So Beth is going to talk about what we have to do when we are trying to um, you know, make sure that this long list of commits like works together. And so she's going to show you how to get bisect. So I'm just going to breeze over that part. But yeah, so we do this um, to identify commits that aren't um, that break the, the build and the test suite. And then we can use an interactive rebase to actually go back in time, pull out the commits, edit them, uh, basically rewrite history to make sure that the uh, list of the commits that have been pulled into the release line are all the um, passing the build and passing the test suite. So we run it again. Looks good, right? 
Not quite. Uh, we have to do this several times, so we have to iteratively do that until we have a passing build. So it's not just once, it can happen you know, 10 times, uh, quite a few times before we um, can yeah, have like something that we can start deploying. So passes local test suite, great. So now that I've passed the local test suite, um, there are a couple steps. First, um, I think I mentioned release notes at some point. We have a, an automated, uh, again, another kind of CLI tool where um, you can see there's a markdown flag, um, and it kind of takes the list of commits, and it will generate a, a, a release notes kind of like commit, um, commit list. And so, and it'll take all of the descriptions from the PRs and stuff, and so, um, and then it's up to the releasers to kind of put together that, those release notes and also to kind of write some descriptions of, oh, these are the notable changes, these are the breaking changes. Um, usually there's some dependency changes that we want to highlight as well. So we'll put all that into the release notes and those will go into the change log as well. Um, just like any code change, we propose a release on GitHub. Um, yeah, you can see here, um, I've added that notable changes section. Uh, we just put the release notes into the GitHub description. Um, I have some fellow releasers and uh, Node.js collaborators that have signed off on the release. And then we run the CI tests on, um, uh, that are kind of like out in the ecosystem. So um, I've already run my test suite locally, so why do I have to wait for all these other tests that are also on CI? Well. Um, for people that have, like, it's kind of interesting because, um, you know, if you haven't worked on a software that is packaged and released out in the wild, you might um, think, okay, well, I only need to run my tests in one environment. Uh, but that's not really the case. Um, it's not a service, so you don't know where the Node.js binary could be running. Um, it is very much like something that could be running anywhere. So all of the CI tests, which take, um, they don't take too long to run, but you know, it is quite a bit of, um, there, are, there is quite a bit of processing power there, I'll say. And so um, we have to run the tests across a bunch of different platforms and operating systems. And then we also run the tests against um, a lot of kind of hand-selected dependencies out in the Node.js ecosystem, because we also don't want to break the ecosystem. Uh, there's a ton of packages that are people that people are using. Um, you know, they're using them in their web servers and Node.js runtimes, and um, a lot of the JavaScript uh, build packages are built on, to run on top of Node. So we try to make sure that everything, that nothing's kind of like a huge breaking change against any sort of environment wherever Node might run. So, and then we build the release. So I just talked about how we stage all of that information. Uh, so first, I'm going to create the release build. This is just another CI that creates all the builds uh, for all the different platforms. Uh, we tag it on GitHub, so we've like pushed all of this information to GitHub. Uh, we tag, we, we use like a tag object to link to the release notes. And then we promote and sign the releases um, so that they are verifiable on you know, the distribution channels that are from Node. Uh, so I just talked about all of this kind of like public, uh, public um, steps that we take for um, releasing, but I didn't talk about any of the security parts about it. So like, uh, we don't want to default to security by obscurity, but um, you know, when we are working on a security uh, patch, we want to make sure that we're doing it behind closed doors before we are disclosing that vulnerability. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about security releases and how they're different from our regular releases. So um, yeah, so like Node.js, uh, like many, and sorry, Node.js, like many open source projects, um, uses a public bug reporting tool for security researchers uh, to submit potential bugs. So that all happens. Um, that's, I guess, behind closed doors. You know, it's just a, a conversation between the Node.js team and a security researcher. researcher. Um, once the bug has been verified as a vulnerability, that's when the wheels start in motion about with the Node.js security release. Um, so because there's so many steps in that, we actually have a designated security steward that is assigned to that release. Uh, we have a rotating list of people that each take a release. 
Um, it's very much like herding cats. There's just a lot of different pieces to it and they all have to happen um, kind of asynchronously. So uh, we have one person that is designated to make sure all of the steps happen um, so that you know, we don't miss anything. Um, so when we prepare the security release, um, that is a little bit different. So I talked about in the regular release, you know, it's just the releaser, we look at commits, we pull stuff in, it's really up to the decision of the releaser. This is a lot more collaborative. Um, we ha because there might be a couple security vulnerabilities that have been reported at the same time, we have to make sure we're organizing, um, you know, there might be like one, two, three uh, security patches in one release. So we make sure we organize that so that we don't have security, not that we have a ton of uh, security um, reports, but you know, we just want to make sure we batch those together so that we can, you know, it's clear, okay, these are, this is how you can address like these X, Y, Z. Um, then a date is scheduled. So usually, uh, like, unlike the releases, the regular releases, which can take a couple weeks, this might take several weeks or even months in order to coordinate all of the steps that need to be done before the release is done. Um, then we'd have to check that the fixes are actually ready for integration into the code base and that they fix the problem that was originally reported. So this step is exciting because, exciting and interesting because um, the OpenJS project was, um, let's see, so I'm gonna talk about who actually works on these fixes. Uh, so the OpenJS project was the first, or I'm sorry, Node.js was the first uh, open source project to be funded by Project Alpha Omega, which was really exciting for the Node.js collaborators and leadership because that means we actually got external funding for some of the security efforts that we really wanted to focus on, but everyone on the project is kind of, you know, they're very, they're working on maybe the operations or the feature forward um, work. And so this devotes um, a couple people's time to making sure that security, um, that we do like proper security triaging, um, stewarding, stewarding releases, uh, and then just improving the overall security efforts of the project. So this doesn't just include um, you know, security releases and making sure we have proper patches. This is just overall, like, you know, recommending best security practices across the project. And so, um, yeah, so we've been, uh, we've been excited to be funded for this project this year. And so this extends across the security releases and the work that's done to create remediations for any vulnerabilities. Um, and again, like I said, this takes the burden off the maintainers, which, you know, there isn't really, when you're working on operations or feature forward tasks, there isn't really a deadline, whereas like when you have a security vulnerability, um, you usually, there is a deadline and um, you have to do things within a certain amount of time and that's a lot of pressure on people, you know, who may, might be doing this in their free time or, you know, not really being paid for this type of work. So. We have the fixes in place. Um, usually that person that's working on the patches, they are engaging with the security researcher to make sure, hey, does this fix what you, uh, what you saw? There's some agreement that this is, the, um, this is the patch for it. And then we start the release process. So, oh, wait, we don't release yet. First, we do a pre-release announcement. So you might have gotten an email or something that says there is a you know, XYZ security release coming out on this date, um, but it doesn't say what the, the vulnerability is. It doesn't have a CVE or anything. It just says, we have a security update, you know, stay tuned. So that's usually what this announcement is. Then we run the release process. So that little step is all of the stuff that I talked about in the first part of the talk. So, you know, running, creating the PR, pulling in the commit, running the, the, um, the tests. Um, you know, creating release notes, making sure that there's coordination on the proper release notes, um, and because this is, uh, there's no other changes in that release. It's only dedicated to the release, um, the security patches. And then there's a post, we post a post-release announcement. So we have, um, we might, we'll then disclose the security vulnerability, and then we have a path to remediation, which is in the form of, hey, upgrade uh, your Node.js version, patch your version, um, you know, this is, the, this is the vulnerability if you think that you're affected. So, like I said, a lot of that stuff happens, or a lot of the release process happens in public, so how do we do this behind closed doors? 
Again, we default to Git. Um, everything that we do in public, we actually also have a private space that we do that. So we are reviewing code. We have code reviews. Um, there's a lot of coordination between um, on just different uh, what we should be pulling in to the, um, to the security research, or sorry, the security release. Um, and all of that happens on just like a private GitHub repository. Um, let's see. So now that I've done this entire release, what do I do next? Uh, so I just spent weeks or maybe months working on a single release. And do I get to rest? Well, no. Releasers, as soon as we're done with the last one, we start thinking about the next release because there's always a release coming out. Um, releases are scheduled uh, years and months, or months and years in advance. Um, there are no releases scheduled up until 2026, which is about four years. So um, yeah, so every time we are, you know, we're finished with a release, we're kind of also planning for the next one, and not just the next patch, but maybe the next security release or the next Ember major release. Um, and so as um, if you're kind of like involved, or yeah, so you might have seen that each um, LTS version gets a code name uh, that comes from the periodic table of elements. And so uh, in the English language, there are no um, code names for Q and W. So if you have any ideas, please open a pull request, um, you know, because we also schedule the names uh, very far in advance as well. And so, let's see, I got four minutes left. So good, um, doing good on time. So. This is also, just to give you an idea of kind of like how, you know, I told you, okay, well, we're scheduling in the, in the future. This is kind of a look at the past. Um, a couple years back, I think this goes back to 20, what year is it, 2014, no, sorry, not 2014, 2020, maybe, 2020, um, maybe 2019. But um, so you see we have uh, version 14 is um, maintenance LTS right now. Um, and so that version has about, we've done 45 releases. Um, version 15, which was that kind of in-between current release, that has about 15 releases. Um, and then version 16, which is still supported, uh, that has about, at about 30. And so that will grow to the same height as um, 14 by end of life. And then you have 17 and 18, which are tied because both of those have been in the ecosystem for about um, six months, 17 was for six months and then it reached end of life. 18 was released in April and so it's kind of hit the same um, number of releases and so that will surpass 17 and probably get to the height of 14 as well because it is an LTS version. And then we have 19 which is just released in October and so that will reach about 15 versions and then it will hit end of life um, when version 20 is released in April. All right, so I just talked about all of this stuff that's like a huge coordination for a bunch of different um, people and teams across all different regions. Uh, does this really benefit Node.js developers? Well, I would say yes. Um, I think that there are multiple audiences, multiple users for each version line or release line. And so um, while some developers might want the latest, greatest versions, um, I know at my job, like a lot of people are kind of on the bleeding edge of technology, but some people just want to upgrade every year, every two years. And so this release structure actually accommodates both of those type of users. And, um, as I'm sure you've, you know, uh, Node is used widely across many different industries and different product types, and so we want to make sure that we're catering to everybody. Um, yeah, and I believe that this model allows Node.js to have multiple release lines for multiple types of developers and um, platforms all at once. So if you want to learn more, um, the contributor guides, uh, that URL, I'll leave this up for a second if anyone wants to take a picture. Uh, the contributor guides, um, have, yeah, what do they have? The release, the release uh, guides, they also have the backporting guides, um, a couple other things, some of the, the, the docs about how we do security releases and security stewarding. Uh, the release group has a working group that has its own repository. We meet once a month uh, and discuss releases and the schedule and whatnot. Um, if you want to learn more about Project Alpha Omega, um, I think that's the URL for a lot of the news and stuff for it. And then, um, yeah, and then there's a link to my slides. Um, I think I also need to upload them to the public um, forum or whatever. So 
Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to me. Uh, this is my Twitter account. And then you can find me on GitHub as well. So I appreciate your time. Thanks. Have a good day. <laughs>